How many times can you use the pegs uh, and get accurate readings? Jay, would you like to comment on this one? Uh, well, you th theoretically, you should use the peg once and, uh, and discard it uh, or keep it in some way for that particular patient, and you could reuse it. Uh, clearly, you can't sterilize the peg with any type of autoclave because you'll demagnetize it, and it will no longer be valuable. Um, if you have the ability to uh, gas autoclave, I suppose you could uh, uh, try that. We, we tried doing that in our clinic because we have a gas autoclave, but we find, uh, found that to be relatively unacceptable, so we, re we use a new peg uh, on, on, each, on each patient. Uh, it, it becomes very clear sometimes that if we've used a peg that's been used before on the same patient, uh, sometimes the readings are uh, false. So when we, you put a new peg in, everything is fine. So I think that the idea is to use a new peg and not to reuse them. And you certainly can autoclave them. And maybe you think you can cold sterilize them, but I, I would probably stay away from that also. That's just a how we practice. And, uh, Northwest part of the United States. I, I, <coughs> yeah, please. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think there's a similar view. We'd all love to say, oh, it's completely reusable forever. But I think one of the things is to take it in context in terms of the cost of the peg. Um, and 20, 25 euros or whatever they cost, if, if we look at the range and number of components we use in implant treatments in terms of analogs, impression copings, and everything else, one smart peg per treatment is actually not, a, is, is not very much. Um, uh, there is a, using the same peg per patient is a, is a possible way forward, but again, it, it alludes to the, uh, the issues that Jay's raised around what is sterilization and what would we use it, uh, when and how would we use it, and that depends on people's criteria for cross-infection control. So may I say one more thing? I, I, I don't know how any of you practice, but uh, in our practice, we, uh, if we have an implant that fails within a reasonable period of time, we redo the implant for nothing. We don't charge half, we don't uh, charge them for the cost of the implant. We redo the whole process for nothing. It's excellent marketing, it's great PR, and frankly, I think it's important for the patient to understand that from day one, that if you, you know, our colleagues in orthopedics, uh, they call it a revision when they redo a hip. When we have an implant, we call it a failure, and I think we're more realistic about r reaching forward and understanding what we're really doing here. So if you think about what it costs for you to set up and redo an implant uh, versus the cost of a smart peg, it's, it's, it's a non-issue. And also the risk, uh, if you re uh, reuse it, um, uh, that uh, the material becomes weak uh, and uh, it's very time consuming to remove uh, the fractured screw of a um, smart peg uh, which was uh, reused uh, too often. <laughs>